Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. Oh my goodness. Well, this is going to be a little bit of a different um, video. In this particular video, we're just going to be covering a lot of stories that have come out recently because there's a lot. Um, mostly about Harry and Meghan. Now, I know how you like the longer videos, but I got to tell you, when the videos start to be 17, 18, 19 minutes long, it's time to cut them off. So if I missed any information, don't worry, it'll probably end up in the next day's video. So let's just jump in with both feet and get there, shall we? Let's go. Remember I told you guys yesterday that Prince Harry was going to deliver the keynote address of the UN General Assembly's commemoration of Nelson Mandela's International Day. It's every year on July 19th in New York. So, of course, when you think of the UN, this is what you think of. This is where you think Harry is going to give this great speech in front of all these people, but that's actually incorrect. It's a misrepresentation of the facts. There is no formal event for the UN on July 18th. They're having an informal meeting to commemorate Nelson Mandela Day. That's it. So uh, technically, Harry is going to be addressing a very small informal gathering. And here is the actual itinerary off of the UN's website. And it says, informal meeting of the plenary to mark the observance of Nelson Mandela International Day. So this is basically a public opportunity. They squeezed Harry and Sunshine Sacks squeezed in Harry. You know, it's just another bandwagon. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Harry, who dressed like a Nazi. Harry, who made nasty comments about his fellow soldiers who weren't white. Harry, who's made racist comments to black um, reporters. Harry, this is the man who's going to go give word salad to the UN on Nelson Mandela Day. Yeah, tasty pick. I do love this comment that was made on Twitter. I'd like to dedicate the word salad preach about climate change, poverty, and kindness that my amazing wife will be writing for me to my private jets, my SUVs, my heavily armed VIP bodyguards from my 16 bathroom home, my polo horses, my unearned millions, and my Third Reich uniform. Yeehaw. Now, before this announcement came out, I told you guys that Megan was going to go. There was no way that she was going to let Harry go and do this without her. Not to mention, we know for a fact that the Netflix cameras are going to be there taping all of this as part of their fly on the wall documentary. That documentary is supposed to make you change your minds about them. It's supposed to make you see them as these fabulous philanthropic people, which we all know they're not. Megan's mole is taking bets that Megan is going to show up in a polka dot outfit that looks similar to what Diana was wearing when she met Nelson Mandela. And I absolutely agree that's more than likely what's probably going to happen. We know she likes to copy Diana's outfits. She does that for Harry because of his psychological issues. Let's remember, Charles has met Nelson Mandela. The Queen has met Nelson Mandela multiple times. They're not the only royals that have met Nelson Mandela. And actually, Harry and Meghan did not meet Nelson Mandela. He'd already passed away. They met his widow. All right, let's move on. Now, let me point out that when Sophie went and she spoke to the UN, she sat at a chair and in front of her flashed up United Kingdom and her name. Well, Harry is not representing the United Kingdom. He also is not representing the United States. He's not a U.S. citizen. My guess is that the only thing that's going to be up there is his name. That, that's just my thought. You guys, just make sure to keep your eye out for that Netflix crew because I guarantee you this is all going to be taped for Netflix and this whole thing was set up by Sunshine Sacks. Okay, moving on. All right, we're going to interject really quickly an update on the Amber Heard case. If you guys remember, 
Amber's attorneys have filed for a mistrial asking for a new trial because they're saying that there was a father and son with the same name living at the same address and the older man was on the jury and it was supposed to be the younger man therefore her due process was violated. Johnny Depp's attorneys have moved to strike that motion regarding juror 15 as it being too late. In other words what they're claiming is that Amber Heard's attorneys and Amber were aware of the discrepancy from the start of the trial. And it sounds to me like she was keeping it in her back pocket in case things didn't go her way. And now she's trying to overturn the um, verdict. This document that was filed in court says that Miss Heard could not come up with any explanation why she could not have discovered these new facts until now. And that's because the clerk's office provided the pre-jury panel jury list to the parties on April 6th of 2022, more than two months ago and five days before the jury was impaneled. So in a rare moment of candor, Ms. Hurd admits she was aware of the discrepancy from the birth year from the very beginning, right? Yes. And with that, they're saying that Amber conceded that she had more than enough time before the trial started and during the six-week trial, where at least two alternatives were available to investigate and discover the alleged new facts. So clearly, Ms. Hurd waived any right to allege these new facts. She chose not to investigate for so long, much less to demand the remedy of a mistrial. Exactly. So for those who didn't understand that, basically what they're saying is Amber and her attorneys were given the list of the jurors. They, they knew apparently from the get-go that there was a problem. They could have said something during the trial. There were two alternative jurors available, but they, I think they did it to hold it in their back pocket so that if they lost, they could claim for a mistrial. I honestly think that's what they did. Anyway, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, moving on. Next up, the Duchess of Cornwall was celebrating her 75th birthday just a few days early with a lunch that was hosted by Giles Brandreth and the oldie at the National Liberal Club in London. Here she is arriving and greeting her friends. Watch this. Then she was greeted by some people inside, and then she and her friends were told, let's go eat. Let's go back out. Here we go. And out they went to a beautiful garden area that was set up for her food. Watch this. So Camilla was speaking at the oldie birthday lunch and she said, quote, the Duke of Edinburgh's philosophy was very clear. Look up and look out, say less, do more and get on with the job. And that is just what I intend to do. She said that the Duke of Edinburgh and the Queen have always been the very touchstone of what it truly means to get on with the job and an inspiration to each one of us here to do the same, whatever our age. Amen. Good for her. I'm glad she had a wonderful birthday. All right, moving on. All right, on to a new topic. It would appear that Thomas Markle is now saying that he is no longer interested in seeing Megan. Well, can you really blame him? I think we've decided, we've all figured out that he's finally come to the realization that she really doesn't give two craps about him. He had a stroke. She has yet to reach out to the family. She's yet to talk to anybody about him. I doubt she's even sent flowers. They've, they've done nothing. And when he dies, she'll put out something about, I love you, daddy. I'm sorry. But, you know, and she'll try to get, garner sympathy. But just like we said, if the queen died without meeting their daughter, if Thomas Markle dies without uh, Megan making up with him, that's going to be unrecoverable. And I have to agree with what Lulu L.A. said. 
you know, Harry and Meghan posted on their Instagram, it's so easy to break and destroy. The heroes are those who make peace and build. And yet Thomas Markle's phone has no chance of ringing. Exactly. All right, moving on. A uh, quick update on Meghan Markle's motion that she filed to dismiss the lawsuit that Samantha Markle has brought against her. She's now claiming that her statements on Oprah were only her opinions, not her facts. So she, it was only her opinion that Samantha changed her name back to Markle after she started dating Harry, which we already have proven now is not true. It was only her opinion that Samantha had three children by three different men, which we now proved is not true. And on and on it goes. This is going to be one hell of a case. All right, moving on. All right, this next story is saying that Charles and Camilla are hiring an editor that Harry and Meghan sued and they're basically saying it's being done for retaliation. I don't believe that. But they're hiring the Daily Mail deputy editor to run their media operation. And his name or her name, I'm not sure, is Tobin Andrea. And he's being hired as the communications secretary, which replaces Simon Enright. I hope I'm saying all those names correctly. All right, I'm just going to touch on this really quickly. Apparently, Harry and Meghan are very concerned that their daughter, again, they don't care about the son, it's just the daughter, will be written out of history, you know? But um, what it comes down to is they wanted a private life for the kids, which they haven't done. They wanted a private, quiet life, which they haven't done. They're out of, you know, the circle. These kids are growing up. They're not going to know their cousins. They're not going to know their aunts and uncles. Yes, they probably will be written out of royal history, and Harry and Meghan can blame themselves for that. All right, moving on. We know that Oprah did that. I call it the show, not the, the interview, because a real interview wouldn't have been aired until Oprah fact-checked everything they said and then went back and spoke to them about the lies, and we all know what happened. Oprah has literally wiped the interview from the internet. She doesn't want to be associated with it. And we all know that Harry and Meghan went to see Oprah the other day. Well, it's being reported that Oprah told them, basically, that um, they should not look back. You know what I mean? That, that they should just move forward, choose happiness, choose joy, choose to look forward and not look back. Right. You're responsible for your life and life is about moving on. Um, but I think we've pretty much shown that Harry and Meghan aren't capable of moving on. They are going to latch onto that royal family as much as they've called them racist and cold and hard. They will not let go because after all, that's their bread and butter. You know, I don't need to rehash it. You guys have seen my debunking video. You know what's happened. She said that she became suicidal and she reached out to HR for help and HR slapped her hand and said, we can't help you. But yet she didn't reach out to her mom, who's a mental health counselor. She didn't reach out to her handpicked team of doctors. She supposedly reached out to her husband, Harry, who said, yeah, and didn't do anything about it right? I mean, come on. They claim they were married three days earlier in the backyard. She didn't accidentally say we wanted to work through this or this was a rehearsal. No, she said we were married three days earlier, which turned out to be a big fat lie. Then, you know, Harry says, oh, they cut me off at the first quarter, but forgets to mention that right before they were cut off, they were handed three or four million dollars. Guys, I don't need to go through all of this anymore. We all know what really went on here. And we all know what went on, that this happened while Prince Philip was in the hospital dying and they knew Philip was dying and they put out that this was just a lie to try to muzzle Megan and keep her from speaking. Come to find out the man was really dying and then they turned his death into a PR exercise talking about the wreath and who made it and Megan's hand calligraphy note on it. Blah, 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 blah. We all know how these people work. We know. So now they're talking about a separate, a, sep, a second, sorry, blah, 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 a second Oprah interview. I'm telling you now that will never happen. Oprah would not take the chance of doing that again. Or if she did, let's just say for one second that she did, maybe next time she'll vet everything that was said before she airs it. That might be a smart move. And what Oprah told them ties into this new story that's coming out that Harry just can't seem to let go of the past. He just will not or cannot move on. Now, we know he's having legal action against the Home Office not to allow him to pay for police protection while in the UK. And we know that his memoir has also been put on hold. So 
Harry or su- Harry supposedly is forging this new life in California. And even though he has kids and supposedly all this money is coming in, remember he has yet to receive all the money from Spotify or Netflix. They just got small advances, but they haven't really received a lot of the money. They have this huge property. You know, he has all the bike riding spare time that he could want. He just cannot stop attacking his former life. I still find it shocking that this white privileged male is fighting for the UK people to pay for his personal protection, even though he doesn't live in the UK anymore. And even though he doesn't work for the royal family anymore, this this man who's always talking about equality wants the UK taxpayers to pay for his security. Just absolutely shocking. Personally, I think he should practice what he preaches. He's, they're always talking about compassion and action and love and forgiveness. And, and he and neither he nor Megan have demonstrated any of this, man. All right, here we go. Do you guys remember when Harry and Megan flew to New York and they had all this behind the scenes footage of the time in New York taped? Remember, they went to the Global Citizens Live concert in Central Park and there were the cameras taping them and they went to the memorial for September 11, 2001 attacks and they had the couple taping them. Remember all that? They were supposedly, allegedly accompanied by their own media amid claims that they were filming for Netflix. So now it's being stated that this was their own media, just like they took their own media to Uvalde and Netflix said it wasn't them there. Harry and Meghan's idea apparently was to film interviews from their side of what they were seeing. So in other words, at the 9-11 memorial meeting with the mayor, and then you had, you know, Megan reading to the kids in New York, but it, it wasn't enough to make a program. This was apparently they were doing a what they call a taster teaser to see how things could have been developed if they wanted to go down that route. So, of course, with everything happening with Netflix, guess what? Netflix took a pass and said, we're not interested, just like they passed on Pearl. And uh, so they're hoping to shop it elsewhere, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere. You know, they're saying that the footage is, quote unquote, in the can and that Harry and Meghan are hopeful that somebody somewhere would like to see exactly the behind the scenes of the global citizen and what went on in New York. But, you know, that's the problem. Nobody's really interested right now. So once again, lots of information. What do you think about basically everybody, everybody has told Harry he needs to move on and he just can't do it. What do you think about finding out that all that taping or it's being claimed that all the taping that was being done in New York had nothing to do with Netflix, that that was all Harry and Meghan trying to do a behind the scenes fly on the wall documentary and Netflix passed on it and nobody else is picking it up either. Hmm. I love the fact that Camilla had her birthday. There's just a lot to cover. You guys, Amber heard. So make sure to leave those comments below. You know how much I love to read them. Don't forget to check the subscribe button. If you've already hit the button and make sure you're still subscribed. If you've not hit the button, go ahead and hit the button. For those who have donated through my coffee fund or through the thank button, thank you so much. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, Getter, rumble and you can email me and as always you guys have a great day